What's up guys? Um, right now I'm out on a walk with Bella and it probably is horrible sounding because I have this. This is why it probably sounds really bad to you right now. Uh, the beautiful river that I take Bella to all the time. What's up Bella? Um, we just kind of come here to relax, kind of clear our thoughts and focus up on the day. All right, so it's probably really loud, so let's just uh, go on back to my room. All right, we're back, and I need to shave, holy cow. All right, I'm gonna go do that really quick, hold on. All right, we're freshly shaven, and we're ready for this video. That's it. That's it? Yep, that's the intro. All right, I know I haven't posted a video in over a week, and I apologize for that. This week has been extremely busy, and I have not found the time to record this video, although I've been planning it for probably the past five days. Uh, so I'm really sorry between coaching lacrosse camps, work, uh, and just life in general, especially since I leave for Boise and now, oh my god, 13 days. That's such a short amount of time. Uh, which is scary, so I'm trying to do as much as I can here before I go there. And also, another thing that I've been really busy on is, um, some of you guys might know, I own a brand. Uh, it's called Egocentric. Give them a follow on Instagram right there. It is a brand that I created at the beginning of this year, and we launched, I think, in March, I want to say. We produce clothing, and... 25% of our quarterly profits go to the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. Uh, that's something that I'm very adamant about, and I am super uh, excited. We're releasing new a new line of clothing uh, this next Friday, and I'm so pumped for it. So make sure you give them a follow, um, share it, spread the word uh, about the new post, because we are about to make a big comeback. So, yeah. Earlier I said that I leave for Boise in 11 days. And that is kind of the premise of this video, um, is that I'm going to be talking about why I'm going to Boise State. It's kind of a tough conversation, and I've had to have it a lot of times, uh, because there's a lot of confusion on what I was doing in the future and where I was going. All right, so let's start from the beginning. I've been playing lacrosse for 10 years. Uh, lacrosse is a sport to me that means the world. I absolutely love it. I love being around it. I love playing it. I love being there with my friends and family. Um, I've made so many great friends and so many great memories and been so many amazing places because of lacrosse, and I'm truly thankful for all of it. Um, so, cut to high school, sophomore year, uh, I helped create the high school program in Ording for lacrosse because we didn't have one at the time and we had to go to another school to play and I didn't want to do that anymore. Uh, so we created a program and um, it was pretty rocky. I'm not gonna lie. We, I think we won maybe one game. Uh, we won a game sophomore year, junior year, and then senior year, I was super pumped. I've been super excited. Um, we had an amazing class of freshmen coming up that I was hoping was gonna help us uh, do amazing things. And it was also my senior year, and it was kind of the pinnacle of what I wanted to reach. I wanted to get to the playoffs, I wanted to have a good year, I just wanted to enjoy my time. Because the past two years I had enjoyed it, but it almost felt like a job trying to teach these kids how to do everything and how to kind of be the man for the team for some time. 
and there were def- there were definitely other people that stepped up, um, and it was not just me. Uh, but I felt there were a lot of times where uh, the team's success was reliant on two to three people, and that's not how lacrosse should be played. Before the season, I had uh, I had been like being I've. I've been re- I had been recruited for probably two years, uh, junior and senior year, because that's just how lacrosse has been. I had the amazing opportunity to fly out to Illinois Wesleyan University in Illinois uh, in the I think it was in October uh, for a visit. I was super pumped about that because they wanted to house me and I enjoyed my time there. It was super fun. It was a cool place to be. The coaching staff was amazing. I had never experienced anything like it. It's a really cool feeling. Uh, And if you have an opportunity, even if you don't think you're going to play somewhere, I would definitely say just um, go and visit the school because it kind of changes your perspective on what's going on. Um, So I went there. um, I had talks with other coaches, other schools about playing after high school. That was definitely a goal for me all along. Uh, And I know every kid's dream is to play D1. And trust me, that was my dream too for a while. But then once you realize it's a full-time job, and that things get, you know, school is a huge task to deal with, and then put lacrosse, you know, three times a day in there. That's that's a lot to deal with, and I just kind of wanted to, I still wanted to play the sport at a high level, but I didn't want the uh, job aspect of it, I guess you could say. And they're amazing people who play D1, and they are beasts, and I respect the crap out of them for that. But I was looking more D2, D3 area, and if I could go D1, that'd be amazing. But Division 2 and Division 3 of the NCAA are what I wanted to go towards. Um, so I had been recruited, um, and there were a lot of things going on in my life towards the start of lacrosse season, uh, a lot of family problems. A lot of issues uh, just surrounding me, and those aren't excuses or anything. But I had applied to, I think, eight schools, and uh, they are Boise State, Arizona, so University of Arizona, Penn State, um, Illinois Westland, St. John's, Syracuse, Boston U, UCF. And I got into all five of them, which is amazing. I'm super, super blessed for that. And uh, I don't honestly know how that happened, but it was a big mistake. Um, Unfortunately, about five or six of those schools are extremely expensive. And that is not something that me or my family could take on. And so that kind of limited uh, my decision, which kind of sucked. But I was also kind of silly for just throwing as many... Uh, applications out there as I could and seeing what would come back. Um, I think I just wanted the gratification of knowing that I was able to get to that level. But unfortunately, I couldn't afford it, uh, as many people can't. And so um, initially, I just wanted to enjoy college. And uh, there are a lot of different aspects of lacrosse. And one of them that I don't like is, I think this is just sports in general, is how competitive it is to play at the top level. If you're not playing Division One, people generally look kind of, not in disgust, but just, you know, surprised. Like, oh, that's not that big of a deal. Like, a lot of people can go do that. And that's most sports in general. You know, D2 and D3 sports are undervalued 100%. Um, but initially, I chose to go to the University of Arizona uh, because I love the location and the team seemed like I wanted to play. It was a club team. And that uh, doesn't sound super glamorous, and I don't really care. I was super excited to go to school there in Arizona. It was super nice weather. The campus was beautiful. The location was great. The coach of the team was willing to work with me on anything I needed. The team was doing better than it has in past years. I was super pumped. So excited. And then um, stuff happened. Uh, and halfway through my senior year, Uh, We were going into a game uh, into spring break, and uh, it was it was the game right before spring break. So I think it was like a Friday night game, and it was away. And uh, I was playing, and I went to shoot the ball or make a pass or something like that. And all of a sudden, I got hit in the middle of my thigh, and I don't know who did it or what happened. And I'm not going to point fingers because that's just the sport of lacrosse is a contact sport. Um, But I had a dead leg, and I was. it, it, I wasn't like my knee wouldn't bend and that kind of hurt a lot 
and uh, but I was you know just kind of still able to play and we were winning at that point so I came off the field and just kind of cooled down uh, fortunately that was going into spring break and I had all the spring break to just kind of rest relax and not be on it and I did and I came back the following week everything was perfect things were going great and then I think the second game after spring break um, I landed I, I went to t make a hit and I uh, landed weirdly on my leg and kind of rolled onto my legs and uh, then the pain came back from the initial incident and that was not fun and I couldn't bend my knee again and that was just unpleasant um, and so I uh, went home and my leg was throbbing and everything was in pain in my right leg and uh, I woke up and it wasn't as bad um, but I had uh, no ability to bend it. It was staying straight for the majority of the time and I was just kind of hobbling around and it was kind of a weird thing because you know people especially in high school want a clear-cut answer of what's wrong with you and I couldn't like I don't know I didn't know what was happening I didn't know like if I had screwed up my knee somehow or if it was just a big bruise or if I'm just being a baby or what but um, yeah and so um, a little backstory here uh, I had been dealing with weird injuries for a while and eventually I went to a blood doctor and they said that I might have a blood disorder I might have hemophilia or another version of it and so that was always something that I kind of kept in the back of my mind but I didn't think that it was a big deal here and then fast forward I went to the blood doctor uh, because my mom wanted me to super smart by the way um, and I uh, was told that there's a lot of blood in my leg and it's super swollen and so they're going they gave me IVs to try to clot the blood because my blood wasn't clotting very well it was just sending blood to the source of the injury and it wasn't leaving so they sent they gave me three IVs uh, in the span of three days and this was all I think I got injured and went to the doctor on a Tuesday and then my senior night game was on Friday and senior night is a super big deal for me it has always been a big deal for me I've always been super excited for senior night uh, and so um, going after the third IV I didn't feel any difference my legs weren't changing um, it was super swollen still it was I was still injured I could hardly bend my leg uh, but I decided that I'm going to play in my senior night game so I told the doctor that I was feeling much better and I went and played and it was painful to watch I've heard uh, it was painful to play um, it wasn't that bad but I just was definitely not back to my normal self which kind of sucked um, and so I uh, just kind of hobbled around and I would not leave the game um, I refused to exit we won the game and that was a big deal for us because that secured playoffs and that was my senior night and that was probably one of the happiest moments of my lacrosse career was the amazing feeling of finally achieving something uh, and all of the freshmen being super pumped because they knew that they had helped a lot and all of the returners knowing that finally we had struck gold and made it to the playoffs it was just a beautiful feeling and it was senior night and it all was perfect until um, I got a phone call about two days later while I was at the blood doctor and it was this doctor in Seattle and he said hey Connor um, I'm a specialist for uh, blood disorder problems and I've been told that you have a bleed on a bleed which might cause an issue we're gonna need to get you in here as soon as possible and so that kind of scared me because I was like oh god like am I gonna lose my leg uh, which was never really gonna happen so I was just being stupid but um, I got there and um, they're specialists in stuff like this and in injuries they're physical therapy uh, with blood disorder people specialists and so they have an amazing ultrasound system there and they'd ultrasound my leg for probably an hour just checking it out seeing what's going on and eventually they turned to me and said you have a small bone growing in the middle of your thigh about this big uh, so not super big but um, it's gonna continue to grow if you keep moving on your leg so you're gonna have to stop playing and 
I was like playing like this week or like this month, and they were like, "No, you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to stop playing in general." And that was um, extremely difficult to hear, and it still is kind of difficult to hear, uh, especially being around lacrosse players lately and just enjoying the coaching aspect of it. It makes me miss playing so much more, and uh, so I think I handled it the best I could. Uh, I just. I've had a lot of things in life kind of go the way, not the way that I wanted it to. And, uh, and that's just how life goes sometimes. So you just got to change course and go with it. But that was devastating to me. Um, I had to tell my coach in Arizona that I couldn't play for him. I had to tell my teammates that I was done playing. I had to tell all of my friends at school uh, why I was on crutches and that I wouldn't be playing again. And that broke my heart. That was absolutely earth shattering. Um, and so you got to do what happens every time uh, something devastating happens. You got to pick up the pieces and you got to get back to work. And so I picked up the pieces and I helped coach my team. Um, and I tried to give them as much knowledge as I could in the two weeks that we had. And we ended up winning our first playoff game, I think 26 to two or three. It was a blowout, we were so happy. And then we got to the semifinals and um, we lost that by I think 10. And uh, that was devastating too, because that was it. That was over for my high school career. Like I had been able to coach and yeah, I hadn't been able to play, but I just, it was just a rough time. Um, and so, yeah, so then the following weeks came, and I realized that without lacrosse, the University of Arizona is an extremely expensive school to go to as well. And so I realized that I had to decommit and not go to Arizona anymore because I just, my family and I just couldn't afford it. And so we looked at Boise State, and we did some research, and I was uh, super lucky to receive the Western Undergraduates Exchange Scholarship, which covers a majority of tuition. And then I also won a bunch of scholarships back here at home, and I have a couple grants, and of course I'm going to take out a couple loans, but um, Boise State seemed like a perfect fit for me because I never wanted to stay in state. Uh, I wanted to enjoy college and be able to go where I wanted to and enjoy what I wanted to do. And uh, Boise was the perfect distance because if I ever had an emergency, my mom could get to me in a day. But uh, it was far away enough where um, I had independence and was able to go and do what I wanted. And so um, now I'm going to Boise and I'm hopefully going to help coach them uh, and see what I can do on the lacrosse side of things. But I'm also just really excited for once in my life to be just a student and enjoy the college uh, lifestyle and enjoy figuring everything out on my own. Uh, and I'm super pumped about that. But I guess the message of this whole thing uh, is play every day like it's your last. You never know when the last time you'll play a sport is or the last time you'll see someone is or any of that stuff. Uh, just live every day like it's your last and truly embody that and enjoy everything that you do in the moment in each day. So yeah. Um, sorry to take that on kind of a sadder note. This was a story that I wanted to put out there, uh, not only to explain for myself, because I get this question a lot of why am I not going to Arizona anymore, or why am I going to Boise State, um, but also for people who, you know, have certain situations that uh, things happen, you know, life happens, things change, not everything's perfect and peachy, all right? So you just got to understand that if things change, things change. That's just the way it goes. So thank you for watching uh, this super long video. Uh, I hope that it inspired you maybe a little bit. Hopefully it um, kind of gives you an understanding of what's going on in my life. Uh, and yeah, I, I will be uploading more frequently now. Um, please like the video and subscribe. It means the world to me. Uh, and I get super excited to see when things grow. And uh, if you guys could like share it on your social medias and spread the word and tell your friends and your family, uh, I would absolutely just be so happy. So thank you so much and uh, peace.